No, really interesting. Nineteen ninety two. Hm. Look at that. Nineteen ninety two. Hm. Okay. Who are the wealthiest people in the UK? Well, I dedicated something to this. Hey, I'm going to say I didn't do my homework. I don't know. I wouldn't want anybody to be guilty. Charles says he's worth $2.3 billion. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see this list. Here is basically how I got to one. Go here. Go like this. And... Then I follow the trail. I just click on the mainstream media link that appeared over there next to all these figures you see. And off we go to see what's happening here. No, no. And so the first one is I think these are Hindu people from India. Hinduya. That sounds like Hindi. Well, I am surprised there are no Chinese here. But British are closely tied to India because Ow. They still hope they're going to get one back. It is just as simple as this. And the rest, I don't know. Indian people are pretty smart. They are awake. They are not asleep. They watch every step. They pay attention to their freedom and so i don't know <clears throat> he's worth 35 billion <clears throat> the second place it looks like a british with a 30 billion 
On the third place, we can see Leonard Blavatnik. Sir Leonard Blavatnik. No. 28.6 million. He is the richest Briton, is a Ukrainian born business magnate and philanthropist who built up his fortune in Russia. His money mainly comes from media and music investments, including Barn Warner Music 2011 before taking it public 2020 and his investment. Uh, well, I am going to put it this way with British debt, basically, it's brain surgery on me inside of this house with uh, with a brainwash suggesting me that Israel Ashkenazi 45% they insisted me but they said these are these are all Ukrainians basically you know Ukrainians, Polacks, and so on and so forth. That, that's basically what they insisted me when it became clear that the Ukrainian government had to back down right in front of me with a truth about what Ukraine was funded on, who basically fit itself since the beginning of the time when it comes to Ukraine through utterly Jewish slave trade. Since the beginning of Ukraine, Jews traded with Ukrainian people, they sold them. It was a business uh, and it, it traces Furthest down uh, in the history of the Jewish slavery trade, because Jews engaged also in a Dutch slavery trade, they engaged in German slavery trade, British employed them also for slavery trade, everybody employed them for slavery trade, it was a business, one of the main businesses, but nowhere Jews made more money. Uh, became wealthy and piled up wealth then through the slavery trade then in Ukraine since the beginning of Ukraine. It is incredible stuff that is being mixed up with what a through negotiations through the government negotiations they added into the same group with the Jews, uh, Arabs, Turks, and even Tatars, and demanded from me an opportunity also uh, to accept that the only people Jews have uh, traded with as a slaves, slave trade, uh, that involved the slave trade, were uh, captives of the wars, basically uh, prisoners of the war, which is, of course, a tremendous bullshit. This is a topic that I think it eventually is going to become more and more interesting. It's something that Khmelnytsky ended finally in 1650. Uh, and for him, for what he did in 1650, because from the Black Sea it extended throughout Ukraine all the way to Poland, Jews continued to hijack females, women, uh, sell them like a bananas, daughters, wives, slave trade basically, big business, big business through what was at the time Polish apartheid, because they enslaved Poland through the Lithuanian Commonwealth and turned one literally into the land of slaves. Uh, so, 
because Khmelnytsky, this is this is really really something. It's for me it's unforgettable because in 2012 I was labeled as a paranoid schizophrenic by the Jews. Jew was the one that labeled me from the Israeli Knesset did, American Jews did, and of course. Who other would than Ljubljana without even having the right to uh, hear why I was labeled as a paranoid schizophrenic, uh, without my even having the right to the second, to the opinion, to the second opinion from a second psychiatrist, without my having the right to any kind of court, anything just the van comes lies against me by the family domestic violence throw me inside and i disappeared filled with psychiatric pills and that's all there is if you will ever raise the topic of jew slavery trade you will be and yeah, they did this at wikipedia Khmelnytsky told people that the Poles had sold them as slaves into hands of accused Jews. They cited me. Cossacks and peasantry, numerous Jewish townsfolk, as well as Shakhtar temporary, wherever they found Shakhtar royal official or Jews, they, the Cossacks, killed them all, sparing neither. So this year is told them, Khmelnytsky told them, Khmelnytsky told the people, Khmelnytsky told the people, this is what the Slovenian police insisted. It will be with me that I am told the people, told the people that his act was a schizophrenic and he was a coming Hitler, basically, he was a predecessor of the Hitler and so on and so forth. Yeah, so basically, for uh, Ukrainian people breaking through the chain, uh, literally, it became later on, became apartheid. But the uh, Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth was actually turned Ukraine into the colony, it turned it literally into the slaves with whom they would also trade, they would also cash them. Sold them like a bananas, basically. So then at the later stage, Pollocks used against Ukrainians also apartheid issues. But they would not allow them. They would allow them to exist, but they would not allow them to go past uh, high school to any university. Actually, even for the high school, to attend the high school. In Ukraine, Ukrainians in Ukraine, uh, they would need a special permission from the Pollocks and so on. Uh, these are the things that they just don't want to know about. It's all about Stepan Bandera, and it's all about other issues, about whatever that might be. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just stated this stuff because the next issue I was going to discuss is Ashkenazi Jews. Ashkenazi Jews, and they started to brainwash me with the Ashkenazi Jews. Uh, Ashkenazi Jews, Ashkenazi Jews, don't talk anything about this because if you say this, it's all going to be Ukraine. Ukraine. The Jews of Western Ukraine today overwhelmingly descended from Ashkenazi Jews. It's all Ashkenazi Jews, it's all Israel. So 
what you will do, you see here, there you go, the Khmelnytsky massacre, you see, we're coming from the same roots here, we're coming from the same roots, baby, we are, we are like born for one another here, I learned the business from Jews alone, MK Ultra was an excellent, excellent source, excellent at the stuff that, boy, I placed the videos about Jewish slavery trade, you know, Israel sexual slavery. Um, <laughs> um and uh, hey, hey, hey. they tried, they did their best, basically. They did their best so they would be so it would be confused with Gaza people hijacking Jews to to Gaza and so on. So I am not gonna go into these issues. Let's let's just cut this off. Um I don't know, I think they say 35,000 they hijacked from Ukraine or area of Ukraine uh, to Israel to exploit them, exploitate them. Women, you're talking about purely, purely women. I mean, if the Kmelnytsky was a schizophrenic, I don't know why things never changed. Uh, basically, leading straight to the to the to the newly funded state of the Israel, yes. So do not talk, do not talk against the Israel. If you will talk against the Israel, it's all against the Ashkenaz Jews. And Ashkenaz Jews, this is Ukrainian, Ukrainian, Ukrainian. Okay, the thing is, I am not Ukrainian, I am not Ukrainian, lucky you. So, but let go. So, the third man here, the third man on the list is Sir Leonard Blavatnik. 28.6 billion. Eh? This Jack is wealthy. I mean, can you imagine? Compared to the Prince Charles, now King Charles does no shit. 2.3 billion. These are pounds, actually. These are not even dollars. Because this is basically the way they would want. They would want us to see things. So this is Mr. Alex Jericho. We will get to him in a little bit. We will get to him in a little bit. Uh, actually, we are there already. Oh, this is Mr. Blavatnik here. There you go. Leonard Blavatnik. There you go. I don't think I need to go before beyond this. It's actually quite evident that uh, it says here that Is a Ukrainian-born business magnate. Ukrainian-born business magnate. Um, then we have on the fourth place is David, Simon, and Reuben family. I don't think I need to go into that one, but okay, because this is for just the demonstration purposes. Me showing you this. No, how could that be? No. Not at all. You know, Rubin and uh, Goldberg 
Diamondstein, uh, Silverstein. There is no, oh yeah, maybe Platinum Stein already also exists now. Uh, <clears throat> not Jewish at all. Not enough Jewish for you. Okay, so the fifth place is James Dyson and then is Lakshmi Mittal. It sounds like, to me, it sounds like from India. Yeah, Indian born. Uh, the, the stuff I am talking to you folks about, you know, the Slovenian police in front of Prince Charles, now King Charles have brainwashed me with. So that you're not going to raise the issue of this. So we favor Ukrainian people. We favor Ukrainian people. We favor Ukrainian people. Oh, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. And I have a guy, George, Elena, and Galen Weston family. Maybe I should do the same thing with other issues. Do I have not? Where the hell? Where, 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 where are you going with it? Where am I going with it? Where are you going with it? We're going with it. Oh, Mr. John Dyson has some Bulgarian. Well, he's like uh, some sort of Ashkenazi, right? Something like that, like Eastern European, Lithuanian, something like that. Original Yorkshireian. Um, where am I going with this? Where? Why am I doing this stuff here? Where am I going with it? You know, first of all, if I was a Jew, I would list it myself as Jewish. I would say I'm Jewish British or Jewish. Uh, I was list, I would list myself a Jew. So I don't know where the fuck am I going with it. What is it? What is it so camouflages this stuff that that needs to be so hidden from the people's eyes? I mean, what the fuck do you fear about disclosing who you are? I mean, usually. People are proud about their origins. They'll tell you, I am whatever the fuck I am. It doesn't matter, but they'll tell you, I am from here, I am such and such from here or whatever. So where, where am I going with it? I'm going straight to where people should discuss about and they don't. Because they're afraid of the term they invented, it's called even a political correctness. It doesn't have anything with any kind of correctness or anything like this. Jews do have their homeland. It's called Israel. It's their country. And it's prestigious. So they say... Glazers are Jewish, and it's but this is irrelevant. Okay, so you see, I I haven't even done that. I was gonna, as I said, uh, okay. So So we have uh, this one, and you have uh, Guy George. Guy George is a seven one. It's like British, British, yeah, fourteen point five billion. And then is a Charlene Di Carvalho Heineck and Michael Di Carvalho. Sound to me like a Portuguese, or maybe even Brasileiro.
it's got to be some high neck and inside too dutch maybe it's completely high neck and i don't know there you go all these people were involved in mk ultra folks it's just i honestly don't give a fuck about because to me personally their involvement did nothing good really it was this here in the end it culminated into it's basically up to 52 years of bestiality i had enough power to do something like this god blessed me to create what you see here and for doing this stuff i i feel fortunate i do so for me personally there's no difference if it's a high neck end or carvalho or uh, a goldenberg or to me it's the same it's just interesting oh my god oh members of the swedish born jewish kirsten and jan rosing it's a swedish born jewish oh okay let's see what else here then we have a michael a plat i know right now it's 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 sebastian seriously where are you going with it well that's a british that's your british guy there you go there you go that's a british viva britannia you know <laughs> when you when you consider that prince charles king charlie is worth just 2.3 billion <laughs> you know it's not so bad i mean uh, he's worth 11.5, they say here, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's see. And then they have the Duke of Westminster and the uh, Grosvenor family. Yeah, oh, kind of boring. But wait a minute. I feel like the guy in this American commercial on a TV. But wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. It's not only that you don't you don't only get this if you buy two you get one for free no no but the, don't don't just walk away <laughs> we have another offer for you No, it seems like that now, now we landed somewhere in the rank of British um, <laughs> you know I don't I don't fucking believe any of this stuff you know I think I'm going to co complain to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission about it because I don't see my good friend A Russian, Roman Abramovich. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I Kmelnitsky. You were lucky they didn't have a psychiatric hospitals back then. Oh, there you go. You is a former governor of Trakutka. Well, but you know what? Let's see how much worth. 9.7 billion. Yeah, I'm sorry. Because I I did not made it to to Abramovich yet. So now if I would 
submit this complaint to the EEOC, equal employment opportunity. Well, no, fuck. Look, I did. I did. I was going to say they would prove me wrong, but no. No, they couldn't prove me fucking wrong. So there must be some specials in between. And we have a, it's a Oleg Peripetka and uh, Alicia Asmanov. This is a boy, a wealthy boy club. Let's see this one here. Oh. He's a, he's a Uzbek guy. But uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> he seems like he likes. Uh, Uh, these guys here, these boys that you see, these are all little Putins. This is all basically why this stuff here. Why am I recording this if you want to know now? Because I'm not fucking mad. I'm recording this to make you a point. Which I have made in these videos here. I made a point about this stuff here. I made a point about this stuff. It's a very good point. As a draw. You can only spy for somebody that is as big as United States of America and or Britain because it must be big enough to protect interests of the newly founded homeland, Israel, primarily. And then the secondary is basically cover your financial interests, basically keep you alive, basically keep the money going. Keep the spin turning. Keep the coin turning. That's why I'm recording this video. I'm not, I didn't go no fucking mad. If I send this to Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, what do you think they would say? Nothing. Why not? That's actually the issue I have discussed right here, I think, right? Right here. In this videos. I'm just surprised I have not mentioned equal employment opportunity. This is what the... Uh, I, I did. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. You know? They wouldn't say nothing because they're part of it. Not because they know it. But because they are fucking owners of it. It's hard. What would you do if you run the business and you run it the criminal way? And somebody submits the report on you, in your face. What do you do with it? What do you do with it? You hide it under the table. What do you do with it? What do you do with it? You put your hands in the pocket. And big smile all over the face. That's basically what you do with it. Oh, sorry. Now I have interrupted something.
you know, so that you look less evident. But shit, I came at the wrong time. I think I am too late to record this video, but it was a happy time. It was really, really a happy times. We're gonna miss the happy times. This one here sounds actually French or something like that, but you know. We're gonna leave the Roman Abramovich. By the way, Roman Abramovich, the best friend of Vladimir Putin there was. Ever. Very, 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 extremely, very Jewish. I'm talking about the espionage. I'm talking about the network that is taking down the world for the countries that are big enough to ensure not only their safety, their well-being, but foremost, ongoing growing of state of the Israel and today they awarded them as you know a good a good news a great news uh, for the Israelis with a new 800 hectares uh, of best land I was told it's going to be during MK Ultra look at this here look at that that's why I posted the news I don't post no fucking news for no reason. This 800 hectares of the land that you see, I personally went on to inspect with the Jews. And based on inspections, they will get everything you see in mainstream media was involved in MK Ultra. Absolutely everything. We are going across. I'm going through the news. I was brainwashed. During MK Ultra, on what will take place. So this is actually Netanyahu stated it's very, very good, beautiful piece of land, farming land. It's gonna be, it's gonna do really, really good to the state of the Israel. This 800 hectares. There is no map. I haven't seen anything about it on the internet, and probably you have not either, because I don't think there is. I don't think you can see this land, unless you would go there. It's going to be one of the most lucrative lands in a newly founded state of Israel. Based on MKUltra, indeed. Based on MKUltra, indeed. I listed it like a cornfield. It's going to be really, really precious. Nice. It's not Marie Curie. Nowhere in Europe more Jewish, more kosher than Britannia. Like at top of the line. John Rees. But wait a minute. I am really unsure what exactly do I see. Is this like Reese Feldman or is it John Reese? It's not the same. I think it's not the same, but John Reese Davidson. 
Well, Zone, Zon, it says here. Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi or Nutzi. You know, nuts. Nazi nuts. The thing is, it makes no fucking sense to go over this stuff. It doesn't make any fucking sense to go over this stuff. We have a genius here. It's actually Bo Moscow-born mathematician Alex Gorko who was involved in it. And Alex Gorko was, <clears throat> so he claimed, totally Russian. Totally, totally Russian. He somewhat looks Jewish, but no, 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 is totally, totally Russian. So, okay, so this is a Russian guy. This is a Russian guy. And so is what the British claim me. It's not. Uh, it's not Jewish. British friends of Israel, we unequivocally condemn special massacre of There you go. It's uh, impossible for me to believe this guy is not a Jew. Sorry. Really, really impossible for me to get into this stuff, to believe that, that he's not a Jew. I was really, really severely brainwashed. And his wife, from what I recall, she's like blonde. Russian-born Elena. No, I didn't browse the internet. I listen, there is a bunch of people here that are not even listed. You know, this guy complains here about... I did browse... Yes, I did browse him. Uh, as far as... My enter in here Jewish. That's the only thing there was. There was nothing other than that. Uh, but, you know, here's the thing. This is how I started the video. 
But here's the thing. He doesn't want to be seen. I read about on the news here that he just doesn't want to be seen anywhere. Mystery billionaire who doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. As I was looking for his Jewish origins. It would be something written about it. You know, so you're going to find, you're not going to find, and yeah, you're not going to find Abramovich anywhere. Roman Abramovich does not exist. He's nowhere to be found. You will find whatever. You will be given like this. But I think I did prove the point anyways, despite a lot of stuff that is omitted. We have here. Friedman. Oh, Ukrainian. Was born in Ukraine and winning his fortune in Russia, across bank and retail. Well, there you go. Okay, he was denied entrance to the Moscow Stop Physics College because he was Jewish and instead attended the Moscow Institute of Steel and Alloys. You know, fuck, that sounds so Russian. I will tell you honestly, that sounds so Russian. That sounds so, so, so Russian. Shalom. It's actually from the word shalom. They give you they give you shalom obviously from the word shalom. This is shalom is hello to you in in uh, in uh, Hebrew probably. So silly me, silly me. Right now, at Equal Employment Opportunity, they say, Silly you, silly you, you don't even know that. Ha, ha, ha. There you go. Shalom means, you know what the shalom means? 
sausage. It means peace with you. Peace with all of you. Peace, peace on earth. Like the one you see today. So, is my... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, for the biggest part, for the most part, it was it was Russian Jewry that established themselves with Britain in the U.S. Um, it's all about, uh, you know, in the U.S. they tell you, "I'm a Jew from Russia." In your country, wherever you are, Eastern Europe, when it comes to the Eastern Europe, they tell you Russian. They say to you, Ruski. Yet, yet, Russian. I'm Russian. This stuff here, this one here, it works. This formula here, not because of what I stated here, it's real. It works. This is the way it is. These are the owners of equal employment opportunity. Boy, am I stupid, you know? Why haven't I found this thing here? Because I didn't even title one properly. Equal employment here is missing employment employment opportunity eeoc it's called eeoc equal employment because it's all about employment the palestinian people today in gaza are going to learn it's all about employment it's all about employment it's all about 800 hectares this business Gesellschaft, Geld, that's what this shit is all about. It's all about employment. And, of course, equal. It's all about the equal and about employment. Uh, sometimes it's more equal, and uh, on some other occasions it's a little bit uh, less equal. It all depends. It, it depends on the people. It depends on the person Sometimes more equal and sometimes a little bit less equal. See this? It's not worth shit. But since 1992, he does have to pay the tax, income tax. 